Okay, let's take a look at Newton's first law in more detail. First, we've got to remember Newton's first law is for balanced forces. That's the important thing to remember. When no external unbalanced force acts on an object, it will remain at rest or uniform motion in a straight line. What this means is when the forces are balanced on something, there are two choices. It's either going to be at rest or it's going to keep moving. Now, of course, here's an object with a net force of zero. All the forces add up to zero because there are no forces on it in the direction we're worried about. And on this one, if you add up all the forces, they also add up to zero. So the forces on these are balanced. Newton's first law applies. Now Newton's first law has a trick. The trick is, if we talk about an object like this and we say there are no forces on it, instantly your brain wants to say, okay, that object must be at rest because there's no forces pushing it. But you have to remember, it's at rest or uniform motion. This could be a picture of an object moving at a constant speed. Of course, as I said, it's a little trick because your brain doesn't work that way. It sort of assumes that if the forces are balanced, it's not moving. But we've got to remember that when the forces are balanced, an object can be at rest or uniform motion. What's nice about this is when an object is at rest or uniform motion, all the forces are going to add up to zero. So when you draw your free body diagram, you can say all the forces in this direction, all the forces in this direction are going to add up to zero. So if I'm pulling something with three newtons forward and it's moving with uniform motion, then I know the forces must be balanced. So if I'm pulling it with three newtons and it's moving at constant speed, then there must be three newtons of friction the other way so that the three forward and the three backward add up to zero. So those are the basic ideas for Newton's first law. Let's take a look at Newton's second law. 